Hey guys, it's Tiny Tom Logan back with another video for you and I'm going to be taking a look at another XSPC product today. I've already taken a look at the uh, XSPC Raystorm Chrome Edition. In case you've not watched that video, it is live on the channel. But we're going to be taking a look at the AX360 degree, see at the 360 millimeter radiator. Now the AX are new, you don't get the AX and the EX confused. Um, let's have a look, I will show you. I've already had this out to have a look, but you do get uh, a set of screws with it, I'll just show you those briefly. You can see there you've got short screws and long screws. Don't ever get them mixed up. You'd be amazed how many people do. But anyway, we'll move all the packaging and everything out of the way to have a look at this rad. Now, it's quite, I won't say a new idea, but it's definitely the first one that I've seen that's come onto the market. Because what it is, is the core inside, so all the fins and all the watery bits inside, can be taken out from this aluminium shield, shroud, whatever you want to call it. If you have a look at the ends, you can see that there's screw holes. And I will show you, because I'm going to take it apart in front of you anyway. Because you can take it all to bits. Now obviously with radiators normally, they are um, brazed or soldered together. Now, you may be thinking to yourself, why in God's name would I want to take my radiator apart? Now, the most obvious answer for me personally would be, hang on a minute lads, that means we can paint the radiator and not have to worry about the painting the fins. Because uh, when I used to paint the thermochill radiators of old, I had to mask up all the fins because you don't want to get uh, extra paint on the fins and the reason why you don't want to do that is because then it's kind of insulating um, the, uh, the, all the fins that are there you want to be able to just get the air to pass over it so covering them with paint m m means that the basics of the um, the radiator just aren't going to work now if you have a look it's pretty much like there's just a radiator inside can you see let me uh See if we can get in. There we go. Look, you can see inside. There's just a, a radiator there, a bit of rubber foam in. Now, I've not taken this end off yet. So, oh, they are. You can just unscrew them. Ah, oh, well, I could that one. Ah, oh, come on, Hulk. Ah, oh. no, that one's not given up as easy. I'm going to have to get pair of pliers on it. <laughs> right, so we remove those and then we can carry on unscrewing. So, do do. I really need to get one of these little gun tools where the magnet in the end still works. It's meant to have a little ball in the end to hold it in place, but yeah, that went yonks ago. Need some like lift music when I'm doing stuff like this. Or a bit like Art Attack when Tony Hart used to be doing the drawing. Aha, right, so we've pulled the other end off. Now, I'm assuming, because I have to admit, I've never done this, we should just be able to give it a push. Right, we just have done, so I'm going to carefully, carefully, carefully slide it up. And then we get left with what I'm going to describe as like the inside of a radiator, like a radiator core. Now, if I pull these polystyrene bits off and keep these safe to one side. It's like a radiator, because you've still got the two end tanks. If you have a look, you've got the end tank on that side, and then you've got an end tank on that side, but it's like it's just not got the sides on. They're bare. See? 
But, so you can remove that part of the radiator, so that bit's done. So you can move that out of the way, you don't have to worry about painting this, and it's all going to work perfectly. So I'm going to carefully put that over there so that we don't damage any of the fins. But then, you have the outside, which, if I move all the screws and place everything back down, there we go. You have the outside, which then you can, this is, uh, it's aluminium. So you can sand it all down. This is uh, anodised as well, so you will need to sand this down as well. You can't paint straight over the top of this. You have to sand it back. Where it's aluminium, don't forget to use X primer. I personally don't like um, self-etching primer where it, you don't need to put a, a coat over the top. Um, you know, so it's X primer and primer in one. I always get separate X primer and normal primer, and you X prime it because the acid etch eats into the, the aluminium so it sticks properly. But acid etch will react with uh, a top coat, so then you have to cover it in a normal primer as well. So it's slightly longer winded because it's alley, but that's how you do it properly. Um, then, so just to recap, sand it all right back. Because um, you want to try and get as much of the black off as possible, because the, uh, the anodizing isn't a, a, a good base for the paint. So you do need to try and sand most of it back. Etch prime it. Um, let that dry, make sure it goes off properly as well. Then you want to get quite a bit of uh, normal primer over the top because you don't want any gaps or anything like that. So get that done and then you're ready to put your top coat on and then you can follow normal kind of painting processes but it's the X prime that you need to make sure that you get right where it is an alley frame. Uh, it might, wouldn't be a bad idea to put some... Uh, the nuts in or get some these are I'm pretty sure they're M3 but I could be well wrong I can't really see it wouldn't be a bad idea to put screws in all of these just so that you don't get paint down inside but then you can basically you can paint your radiator uh, and where it is like this it'll make it a lot easier for you if you want to do some funky like really kind of complex paint you wouldn't believe the, the lengths I've had to go through in the past to do um, like wacky finishes on on radiators it, it can be a complete and utter pain in the rectum but I really like this idea because it just goes to show that XSPC are catering and thinking about all of us modders out there now I have plans to use some of these radiators in a rig coming up that I'm going to be uh, building for myself you may be thinking you've not finished all yet well I've always got a plan ahead and keep my, uh, my myself kind of busy um, and I'm seriously, seriously thinking about using these in uh, my new Nurburg rig um, because I am going to be giving the old girl a bit of an update. But there we go. That's it, all done. You can uh, follow the, uh, the guide in reverse to put it back together. Don't forget to put your polystyrene foamy bits back in so that the radiator all sits in there nice and snug. But I really, really like this idea. I would actually go as far as to say to XSPC, because these are 40 mil uh, thick. That was one thing I didn't do, was measure it. I really do need my bottom smacking. Now, I'm wandering around the room, in case you're wondering what the noise is, so that I can measure how thick the rad is. And they are. Yeah, near, yeah they're 40 mil thick. Um... I would say personally that this is the same core as the EX radiators, um, but XSPC assured me that it's not. These uh, do work quite well with uh, low speed fans, so things like the um, SP120 Quiet Editions from Corsair, for example, um, but those low speed kind of fans, they do uh, work really well with these. Uh, the fin density isn't too uh, thick, so you don't need high flow fans, you can get away with the low speed jobbers um but yes uh so it's not too thick i would say it's xspc this idea is great but it would also be nice maybe if you could do a version of this in a thicker radiator as well uh to kind of like um uh, to work out better for those of us that are a little bit more cooling needs now you may be thinking to yourself, so Tom, that 360 degree radio, degree, 360 mil radio, what could I call with it? Now, we'll talk as a general rule. 
it would be a great CPU loop. It'll give you loads of overclocking um, headroom because obviously you need to think about the heat that it needs to dissipate. But having a slightly larger radiator will allow you to be able to run, if you did have this as just a CPU loop, it would allow you to be able to run silly low fan speeds. So it would be non-existent noise-wise, which is what we would like. Um, you could also get away with a CPU, say like a 2500K or a 3770K, and a smaller graphics card, so like a 560, kind of uh, 660, maybe 670 kind of area, um, but maybe not with quite such a large uh, overclock on the CPU. Um, because like I said, you don't want to overload it because then you need more, if you put too much heat into the radiator, you then need a lot more fan speed to dissipate that heat or your temperatures in the rig will rise a lot more. Um, and obviously with water cooling, the whole point is uh, to keep it cool, calm and quiet. And if you kind of like, I always prefer personally to go for a larger or more radiator so that I can run lower fan speeds rather than trying to cram it all onto one and then the temperatures go up and having to run higher fan speeds. That's my take on water cooling anyway. I much prefer something that looks nice, is dead quiet, which is kind of the point of it in the first place, but you still get great temps. So it just sometimes means that you need to uh, have a little bit more radiator surface area. Um, then somebody that's uh, deaf always wears their headphones or doesn't understand the fact that you can actually have uh, really, really cool temperatures. But anyway, that's just some really basic advice. I should maybe even think about doing another um, uh, a guide, maybe on radiator loading and stuff like that. But anyway, we've uh, I've yabbered on for far too long. I could have cut this off a lot shorter, so I do apologise. But for now at least, this is Tiny Tom Logan with another video for you. Out. Ding! <laughs>